love the chase and the hunt And I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now we All right guys, welcome back We're here picking up some storage containers But I wanted to tell you about the last two weeks It's been very interesting So you know, I came home because I found uh, pieces of metal in my fuel filter when I changed my fuel filter on my truck. So, uh, hearing all the things about the CP3 failures and all that, I was like, metal in the fuel system, all bad, right? So I go to a dealership, uh, it took a couple days, almost a week, to get in for an appointment. And then uh, the dealership was like, oh yeah, that's normal wear and tear, uh, nothing to worry about. They said it's not from the high pressure fuel pump under the hood, they said all the, the metal flakes are from the end tank fuel pump. So they know about it. Uh, they're not concerned about it. And there's no check engine lights or any, any issues on the truck. So they said, you're good to go. So I'm like, all right. So then after that, um, I get a notification in the mail saying my DOT number's been deactivated. I'm like, what the hell, you know? what I do and then apparently it said I didn't file my biannual report so when I was getting notices about filing a biannual report for my DOT number I'm going to myself thinking I just applied for this DOT number last year it's only been active for one year their definition of biannual is every two years so I'm like I ignored it but just so you know, if you're new to the game and you're getting a DOT number on your truck, expect the following year, the way they have the system rigged, the very last number at the end, the odd number means, it means what year you file. And the way they have it set up right now is that if you're getting a new DOT number, you're gonna have to file a biannual report the following year. So because so I immediately filed my biannual report. Super simple, super easy, took 10 minutes, right? It wasn't even hard. I just didn't do it because I was thinking to myself, like, this doesn't make any sense. Why do I have to file this? Hasn't been two years. But because my DOT number went inactive, the FMCSA notified the state of Washington, and then the state of Washington shut down my IRP plates. So, the whole business essentially got shut down because of this. Luckily though, um, as soon as I did my update on the FMCSA for that biannual update, um, it, they automatically notified the state of Washington and I just went on to the, the tab feature, TAP of Washington. That's where you do all your, uh, your IRP and your IFTA and all that stuff for the state of Washington. Went on there and I was able to see that uh, they mailed out a piece of mail uh, the following day and I just hadn't received it in the mail saying that my account's been uh, reactivated. So everything should be good. I went on the safe, safer.com or .gov website and uh, verified my DOT number is active. There's no issues, everything should be good. Um, so yeah. It's been kind of a pain, you know, so just so you know when you're starting out, make sure you get that information filed the following year and don't pay someone 150 bucks to do it. It takes 10 minutes, super easy. But now to the current issue, showed up here, uh, the paperwork didn't have a release number, they normally do, in the notes where the release number would go, it said to talk to Bo. So I go find Bo in the office. So I'm like, hey Bo, and my paperwork says to talk to you to get loaded. And he's like, oh, this uh, this broker is a pain in my butt, you know. They never uh, use the release numbers that I give them. And then after he starts talking some more, he's talking like he doesn't have the containers. So now I'm sitting over here, I'm waiting for him. I'm getting to uh 20 foot containers used which that's a pile of use but maybe those are in too bad of condition for the customer and then all these are new so now he's going through his inventory 
trying to figure out what he can and can't do so been sitting here for 20 minutes or so I did notify the broker immediately because if I'm here for more than two hours he's gonna pay me for downtime because it's unacceptable you don't send a, a carrier like myself to pick up a load that isn't isn't here for one or isn't ready um, because that just is a bad relationship. It's a waste of my time and uh, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back in the truck where it's a little bit cooler and uh, hopefully someone's going to come around this corner with some paperwork for me soon. Well, so far it's been a good drive, a little rain, but uh, the rest of the week should be nice and sunny, no clouds, with a high close to 90 degrees. So, summer is coming around, but I thought I'd show you the scenic, uh, what is it, the Columbia River crossing here near the gorge, and yeah, I'm going to keep on driving, hopefully uh, get to a truck stop soon because it's almost 5 o'clock and got to find some parking. This guy's trying to adjust his slider on his rear axle and I don't know, I guess he's given up now, but he couldn't get it. So trucking. All right guys, we just left Coeur d'Alene. We're going through the Panhandle mountain area heading into Montana. And uh, they're doing a bunch of road work on the highway and to Montana, so heading southeast. And what I thought was odd is right before you got to the mountain, there's a way station in like Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene. And then 10 miles down the road, when you get to the mountain, they had a pop-up vehicle inspection site. So every semi or anyone with the cdl you know had to pull in and it was just one cop in an suv and he was either telling you you're okay to keep on going or you need to pull aside for a vehicle inspection i'm assuming they're doing the vehicle inspections because of the you know the grade on the mountain and people working on the road they want to make sure you know everything's safe but we just went through a, a way station so it was kind of odd but the worst part about the whole experience for the people that were pulled aside for an inspection is there was no other officers there on duty to physically inspect the vehicle so they're all just sitting there hopeless can't go anywhere so it's another reason why it's good to have uh, good inspections because I'm assuming if you have a bad safety score, uh, that's what prompted them to pull you in for an inspection. Um, that's all I, all I got. But there was no way station, no, no, it was very odd. I thought it was like, it was like a checkpoint, but they said port of entry, inspection. It, it was all pop-up stuff, it was crazy. guys well we made it the weather can't decide what it wants to do it's sunny it's windy it's rainy 
the weather showed it was supposed to be like sunny and up to 90 this week but apparently some storm rolled in and uh yeah it's not too bad right now it's just sprinkling but it's definitely different than uh you know shorts and t-shirt weather i'm very happy i brought my rank out i legit thought about not bringing it because i was looking at the weather i was like man i don't need it but when you're traveling across states you always need gear for any weather and food and water but uh we're gonna get these unloaded sign some paperwork and get out of here and try to pick something up um if we don't pick something up immediately this morning we'll go get an oil change on this bad boy since last time i got an oil change over here it was a hundred bucks for the truck with a full synthetic oil change if i would do that in washington it'd be 200 bucks so while i'm here i might as well take advantage of some cost savings so that's the plan i'll get back to you when uh we get something figured out all right before we go a little update on uh mileage and fuel economy you know about seven miles per gallon for the trip and it was uh 666 miles I paid $1,600, so that's uh, $2.40. So, again, it's not great, but I fought with them. I tried my best to get more money, and after two days of negotiating and not really getting anywhere, I caved. So, I find that you can get the best money and the brokers want to negotiate with you wednesday thursday friday towards more towards the end of the week i find that they're more lenient to give you more money um at the beginning of the week they just kick back and relax because they don't have to have it moved until the end of the week or the weekend so uh, sometimes uh it is better to wait but after being off for two weeks you know gotta make some money Guys, I don't know if you see this truck or not, but this truck just picked up the garbage can and dumped it into his truck. Now he's picking up the recycling. And now he's about to dump the recycling in the same truck. That's how you know recycling is a scam. Look at that. No way. Complete scam. This is why you don't recycle.